This is Kyle Martin Paintings. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle Martin. Welcome to my studio. In today's video, we're going to be unboxing some springtime plein air painting art supplies. I have four boxes from Jerry's Artorama and DickBlick.com. And some of these boxes are the special paint colors that I use to depict spring. That's what I'm most excited to share with you today, but let's get right into it. Let's see, the first box that I have comes from Jerry's Artorama, and this is a big one. All right, first things first, I have a grayscale palette from New Wave uh, Palettes. This is a palette that is for the Yugo plein air system, and this probably fits in perfectly in one of their boxes. Um, I happen to like working on a gray palette, and so I always keep a, a stack of grayscale palettes in my studio. And I used to always work on a glass palette, but right now, at least recently, I've enjoyed working on a gray palette that is a paper palette just because it's so easy to clean up. It looks like I have a bunch of linen panels. These are the Centurion LX universally primed linen painting panels. These are a nice surface to work on. Looks like I got some three packs of 12 by 16s. Um, they come in three packs of six by eights and they also come in six packs of nine by 12s. I like painting 9x12 and 12x16 when I'm out on location. These are not the oil primed panels. These are just the universal primed, meaning you could use acrylic or oil on these. And the reason that I like the universal prime is because I can tone the canvas with acrylic paint. Other than that, I probably would, but I use the oil prime painting panels as well. This is cool. Check this out. I've never seen one of these in person before. Um, I saw this online, but this is a Gamblin one piece blade painting knife and it has flexible steel. I mix my colors with a palette knife and I used to break a lot of palette knives until I discovered the knives that I use right now. And those are the Liquitex knives. Sometimes there's a weld right where the blade meets the arm of the knife and it, the knives always would break right on that uh, bead of that weld. Now this has a nice thick handle. I think this is about a $10 knife. It was something new to try and I'm kind of excited to get outside and mix with it this spring. I don't know if there's different sizes, um, but this looks like a cool knife and I like this little bit of magnolia color that's on the white handle here as well. Here we have a 12 shades of gray acrylic set. I think that the reason I got these was so that I could use these colors to tone some of these linen panels. You can see the colors here. I like this 12 shades of gray set because, and they make this in oil as well. They make all these colors in oil and I use a couple of these on my oil painting palette. I like them because they're kind of just nice and toned down colors right out of the tube. That's fun. Here's some, this is the same thing. This is not a set, but this is also the 12 shades of gray line that Jerry's Artorama has. And this is five tubes of uh, the violet gray color. This is a great color. This is a color that I use a lot of on my palette. It's just a toned down, grayed out violet color. I think these tubes are only $1.25 each and they're 50 milliliter tubes. It's a great color. I use these no matter what season it is. Violet gray is gets the, gets the party started when I'm working in the shadows. And uh, and so I stocked up on those for like a dollar more, more panels. For a dollar or two, it's easy to stock up. Here's some more acrylic paint. I ordered this when I was still teaching at uh, the high school. And when I was teaching painting class, I gave the students a lesson on working with a imprimatura underpainting. And instead of using I know I was just talking about using a grayed out underpainting. 
these are very intense colors and I think that I was intending to use these as a very chromatic Alla Prima underpainting. So some more acrylic paint that can be used for underpainting. Here we've got a Lucas tube of phthalo blue paint. Phthalo blue is a very powerful color. A lot of people say that one tube of phthalo blue paint can paint an entire city block. So we've got some of that. That'll work nice in some springtime skies. Here I've got some tubes. I don't even remember ordering these. Um, transparent yellow oxide. That's a fun color. This is the Lucas 1862 brand. If you're curious about this, I use a lot of it. I think that they should sponsor me because whenever I go to plein air events or anything like that, I'm always carrying these tubes of Lucas 1862 oils. Here we have brown pink. This is a color that I'm not necessarily familiar with from the Lucas 1862 brand, but I bought a couple tubes of it, so I must have been excited to buy it when I did. Here we have permanent orange. This Lucas 1862 permanent orange is a great stand-in if you don't want to use cadmium orange, and this tube is about seven or eight dollars. We all know how expensive cadmium orange can be. Here we've got another tube. Vermilion Light. This is a very intense and brilliant red. Traditional vermilion is of course made with mercury and that will make you sick and poison you immediately. So this is actually a naphthol pigment. This is a fire red and this is a lovely red. About 10 or 12 years ago I was searching for my colors that I was going to use on my palette and this is the best bang for the buck that I could find then. So I'm a big fan of this Lucas 1862 Vermilion Light. It only comes in the small tube. I wish that they would release it in the bigger tubes. Here we have transparent yellow paint from Golden. This is the fluid acrylic. With regular acrylic, if you wanted it to be very runny and very fluid, you would have to mix water or medium with it. This tube of paint right out of the tube comes out very runny and very fluid. And this is again something that I got for creating very chromatic and intense underpaintings. Here we have a tube of Lucas paint. And we have some Naples Yellow Red. The actual Lucas brand of Naples Yellow Red is almost like an apricot color. And so I enjoy this color. All right, to finish off the box, there's another tube of this vermilion light. And I also have a couple of markers that I ordered. These are pretty cool. These are some big snowball tip markers. These are Uni brand, and they're the Posca markers. Sometimes when I'm creating value sketches or just drawing for fun, it's fun to have a white marker because I'll actually work on a grayscale toned paper. And so you kind of build up your darks with graphite or marker, and you can use white paint pens like these to, to create the lighter tones in your sketch. So that's box number one. Jerry's always has really fun bubble wrap in their boxes, and so I just want to give them some shine for their bubble wrap and try to look cool under my studio lighting as well. All right, so that's box number one. I'm gonna open this box next, and this is also from Jerry's. I bought this particular box off eBay, and let me explain why. Jerry's has great boxes. Jerry's boxes were made for unboxing videos. This is my, again, more cool bubble wrap. This one's a little bit different. I think there's six packs of brushes in here. I love these Pro Stroke brushes. They're only available at Jerry's Artorama, and it's called the Power Curl Ultimate Acrylic Brush Set. And these are flats. Sometimes I get flats, sometimes I get brights. Of course, I've had the rounds and the filberts as well. But the thing that I like about this particular brush is that it's kind of a thin little blade of a brush. 
Some brushes, like the Utrecht 236s, are a much thicker brush. Even the Princeton brushes that I used to use, the 6300s and the 6100s, were a lot thicker. And because they were thicker, they had more hair. My thinking is that while I'm painting, you know, I'm picking up some paint and putting it on the canvas, it has more opportunity to just have paint stuck in the brushes, harder to clean. And these synthetic brushes are just a really nice, thin, beautiful brush. I love these brushes. These are long lasting brushes. Anytime that I use natural hair brushes, I have a lot more fraying. The only thing that I need to add in addition to these brush sets is I get some brushes, the same kind of brush, but they make some size 16s and some size 20s as well. And that size 20 is like maybe a two inch wide brush. I'll use these sets when I'm painting and I'll also throw in a size 16 and a size 20. And these six sets are going to get me through the year. My tip for buying these brushes is that I bought six sets of these on eBay and they were, I think $99 to buy six sets. Six sets at $99 works out to be less than the price that they're offered on jerryzartorama.com. The normal price for these on Jerry's Artorama is $25 a set. I would have only got four sets for my $100, whereas here, searching for them on eBay, I was able to get six sets for the same price. And the additional tip when you're buying these brushes is that you favorite them in your eBay and Jerry's will send you a coupon and give you an additional 10% off. So it's actually $90 for six sets. I love these brushes. I've been working with this brush set for over 10 years now and I always load up on a bunch of sets in the springtime. Other brushes that I love to use are the Princeton 6300 synthetic brushes and the Princeton 6100 brushes. Stay away from the Princeton snap brushes. They say snap right on the handle because that's what you should do if you come in contact with them is just take it and snap it in half. Those things will fray out in one painting and they're just cheap garbage that art stores love to sell at a reasonable price. Another box from Jerry's Art Arama. Jerry's is an aggressive art discounting website and so I feel like they have their own in-house brands. This, these brushes are their in-house brand. Lucas 1862, only available at Jerry's. Also available at ASW, if they're even a thing anymore. But ASW is just Jerry's with a different marketing. So a lot of the products that I use are actually Jerry's in-house brand. This is Jerry's in-house brand. This is not available at other sellers. These, these linen canvases, only available at Jerry's. So we got some more tubes of paint. Here we have a Burnt Sienna Lucas Burnt Sienna tube. These are large tubes of paint, by the way. I prefer to use 200 milliliter tubes of paint. This is titanium white, just because I do a lot of painting and it's a great value. Uh, here we've got more titanium white. Here we've got some permanent rose. Here we've got some azo yellow green paint. It's kind of a fun springtime yellow gold green color. I used to buy some paint from RGH Oils and they had a great gold green. Here's a couple of grayscale markers that I can use. I know that I was out of my 40% grayscale markers. These are called concept markers. This is another Jerry's in-house brand. You can get a set of these markers. When they go on sale, they're like 10 or $12 for a set of 12 grayscale markers. They're a lot better priced than Prismacolor markers. They're definitely a lot better priced than the Copic alcohol ink markers. These are great markers. I love them. I use them all the time. Up next, we got a couple more pads of this palette paper. This one, I have no idea why I got one with the thumb hole in it. On the website, this is the one without the thumb hole, but on the website, it shows the product as having this kind of wavy cut on the side. It doesn't have that wavy 
contour to it. So they need to update their photo on the website. But this stuff is good. This The Soho paper is actually really good. I think that this is actually a little bit better quality than the Richeson Gray Matters palette paper. It's the Soho brand. I don't trust their brand for paint, but I do trust it for their uh, palette paper. I haven't had a problem with it yet. And this is also a Jerry's exclusive. Here we've got some more vermilion light. I did not order this. Animal friendly, high performance watercolor brushes. Oh, this is actually a synthetic brush. Maybe I did order this. This has a black squirrel on the label. I used to have a skateboard company that was called Black Squirrels right here on my skateboard rack that's up in my studio. This is a Black Squirrels skateboard. And now we've got Black Squirrels brushes as well. The reason that I named my skateboard company Black Squirrels was that in Reedsburg, there are black squirrels. I'm sure there are in other areas of the country as well, but people would always treat the black squirrels kind of like the skateboarders because they would try and uh, get rid of them. You know, they would trap them and take them out in the country and let them go. And the skateboarders, it was the same thing. They were just doing everything in their power to get rid of the skateboarders. So I didn't realize that this was coming, but that's kind of fun, isn't it? I hand silk screened that skateboard and the person on the skateboard is my friend, Justin Snyder. Here we got a Be Creative. It's a marker sketchbook. This paper is specifically designed to take these markers. And this paper is pretty thick. It says it's 110 pound paper. It's glossy. It's almost like a hot press watercolor paper, but it's coated with something that is going to accept the ink from your marker but it's not gonna suck all the ink out of your marker. And because marker sketches are a big part of my art making process, I enjoy having the right tools for the job. And I love this Be Creative brand. I think it's really cool. This is a nice size for a little sketchbook as well. It's five and a half by eight. I actually measured this one time. It's six by eight, but they have these little perforations here. So anyway, here we've got a, uh, here we've got the Yarka brand semi-moist watercolor set. I use this for sketching. I don't normally show watercolor paintings, but I do enjoy creating watercolor paintings. They kind of have a consistency that's different from any other brand that I've tried. And so I grabbed a set of those. Here we've got another Soho paper palette pad. This is the 16 by 20 version. And this is white. I don't think that they make the grayscale pad in 16 by 20. This does have the annoying wavy cutout on the bottom. This will be my for up here when I'm painting in the studio. I like to have a 16 by 20 inch palette when I'm working in the studio. And I also like having a 16 by 20 inch palette when I'm using the Take It Easel. One last tube of paint. Here we have some lemon yellow. Some Lucas lemon yellow. It's a great springtime yellow. This is the color of fresh buds on the trees. And that's all for that box from Jerry's. So we're down to the last box. And this comes from Blick Art Materials or dickblick.com. For the first few years of painting, I actually didn't even know that there was any online art supplies besides Cheap Joe's and Blick.com. It took me a while to figure out that Jerry's was another option to order supplies from. But the thing that I like about Blick is that their warehouse is in Illinois. And so when I place an order from Blick, it'll come in a couple of days. If you choose their free shipping option, it'll take like a week or 10 days to come to you. But if you just pay for that extra two or three dollar option, it's going to come much quicker. I think what happens is that if you don't pay the extra two or three dollars, they'll put you at the bottom of the list for things to be packed up in the warehouse and be sent out. But if you just pay a couple bucks extra, your order is going to come to you so much quicker. That actually goes for Jerry's as well as Blick Art Materials. So in this box, we've got a jug of this Neo Megilp Medium. This is a gambling medium that I use. It increases flow and transparency. Neo Megalop is a really fun medium to use. It's like none other. It's a little bit thicker than Liquin 
and I just use this straight out of the bottle. I don't mix it with any sort of solvent or anything like that when I use it, and it's been my medium of choice for 10 years now. Here we have a fun tube of paint. This is a tube of paint that I get every springtime, and this is brown matter. But this brown matter tube of paint from Grumbacher, just mixed with a little bit of white, is the color of magnolias. Every year in the springtime, I'm overtaken with joy when the magnolia trees are in bloom. And this is the tube of paint that I reach for when the springtime calls for it. Here we have some more of my favorite colors to use in the springtime. And these are the Gamblin Radiant colors. This is Gamblin Radiant Violet. I love the color Radiant Violet. The reason that this is called Radiant Violet is that it has been pre-mixed to this very light in value, wonderful, clean, violet purple color. A lot of times during the springtime, I'll use this when I'm painting some of the different ornamental trees that are around my area. But this also can make for a really beautiful sky when the situation calls for it. Sometimes I'll just paint the whole sky with this radiant violet color, and I'll work some blues back over the top of it to really add some dimension, and it'll create some of that broken color effect. This is Gamblin Radiant Green. People who are proponents of limited palettes are going to be turning the video off right now because they're gonna say, you don't need all these tube colors, it just has that beauty of the springtime green or early summertime green. I love this color. It's also really useful when you're painting snow or even summertime crops growing. Like last year, I did some paintings of some cornfields just as they were starting to sprout and I reached for this tube color. And I just, I love creating and sharing with people who view my paintings the beauty of light and color. You don't need to use a limited palette to create color harmony in your paintings. What you need to do to create color harmony is you have to understand that the color of the light creates the harmony. And that's why subject matter looks different at sunset time versus high noon. That's why the same landscape will look completely different under moonlight versus a sunny day. And it's because the color of the light creates the harmony. You don't need to use any sort of limited palette or pigment soup or any sort of those ideas. Sometimes it's fun to explore with those ideas and you can learn a lot from limiting yourself. I limit myself in other ways. I try to limit the amount of values that I use. But when it comes to color, color is that emotional quality to your painting. I happen to love color. People who come into my studio, the number one comment that I get back is, I love your color, your paintings are so emotional, you are good at capturing the light, and I love, and having these tube colors, these are really magical tube colors for me to enjoy. Here's another Gamblin Radiant color. This is Radiant Turquoise. Well, you can kind of tell just by the label. It's a very light in value turquoise color. To me, tertiary colors like turquoise are so important to represent on your palette. Sometimes I'll mix uh, two secondary colors to make a low intensity primary color. Sometimes I'll mix two tertiary colors together to make a low. If you're interested in more color theory, and I actually have an hour long video on color theory that I'm gonna be offering for sale on my web store soon. It's something that I put together for a workshop last year, and it's a great video. It talks all about the palette and all about color harmony, and I worked through a couple of different paintings in that video. It's gonna help you understand what I'm talking about when I'm saying the light creates the color harmony in your paintings. You can send me an email at kylemartinfineart.com and I'll send you the link to that video. I think it's gonna be $10. Another magical color, Radiant Turquoise. This is new. I haven't seen this packaging, but this is the new packaging 
on the Gamblin Artist Oils. Apparently, I'm seeing this for the first time. Look at the way that the label shows off this new circular logo with the Gamblin type right below it. I like how it's in this box. It's kind of like buying a action figure when you were a kid or something like that. You kind of get to see it through the, the box. This is a much nicer presentation than these boxes, which are the old boxes. And I like the tube better too. The tube is a lot more current and a lot more, and it says on the back, always forward together. And I actually really like that, that message as well. This is a beautiful color, radiant magenta. Again, it's basically quinacridone magenta mixed with white to be a very light value. I love this color, I can't get enough of it. It's beautiful for painting blossoming apple trees, uh, blossoming cherry trees, all those kind of things. Can't wait to get outside. So happy that I'm unboxing these today. Next up, we have a, a tube of gouache. We got some white gouache. Gouache is of course just opaque watercolor and I put a little dab of it on my watercolor palette from time to time if I think that I need it. Here we've got some Diox Violet, uh, just a tube of paint that I needed to put on my palette. And finally, the last thing that we're going to unbox is a tube of Cadmium Yellow Medium. And so that's it. I really appreciate you all joining me in my studio while I unboxed all these. Beyond this, all I need, this isn't very many panels. I have my own panels that I created last week. I created a hundred panels with this assortment of new art supplies and what I already have in my palette box now, I'm feeling confident and ready for spring and I hope that you are too. So what did I miss? What's your favorite springtime color to use? What do you do differently in the springtime? And I'd love to hear from you. What are you excited about for plein air painting this springtime? But most of all, I'm just thankful that we all got together up here in my studio. I'm thankful that I finally got these art supplies out of their boxes because now I can put them into my palette box and I can get out painting. And thanks so much for being here. We'll see you soon.